Hi guys and welcome back to the early bird photo news straight from Townsville with Magnetic Island behind me and a lot of noisy lorikeets. I hope they don't ruin the sound too much. We've been on the road now for over two weeks traveling from the Gold Coast all the way up to Townsville so far. We stopped in some very cool places. One of those places was Yapoon where there's some beautiful landscape with some beautiful offshore islands. Obviously while I was being out there I was looking for birds but I couldn't really find any birds in the morning. But then on the way back to the accommodation I was driving around around a bit. I suddenly saw a lot of red-tailed black cockatoos eating right on the edge of the road. So I quickly parked the car, grabbed my camera, ran back and was actually able to take some really nice photos and videos just on the side of the road so I was stoked with that. After Yapoon we drove to a special area called Yangala. It has stunning views, it's up in the mountains east of Mackay. There's some really awesome birds in that area that only live in that certain part of the world and one of those birds is the cool Yangala honey eater. I was very fortunate after a few days of searching that I found a few birds and was actually able to get some really cool photos and videos as well. Next stop after Yangala was the beautiful Airlie beach on the Whitsunday Islands in the heart of the Great Barrier Reef with some beautiful scenery and also some more cool birds for me in particular a spectacled monarch and a white-eared monarch. So another two birds that I could already add to my list. And from Early Beach we finally made it up here to Townsville where we are today. Yesterday I was actually able to go out in the surrounding areas and find two brand new honey eater species to me, the yellow honey eater and the little brown bird, the brown backed honey eater. So two more birds, I'm very happy how the trip is going so far and this morning I actually went out into the mountains, was looking for some golden bowel birds, some rifle birds, some spotted cat birds. We saw a lot of birds. I didn't really get the images that I wanted, but I got some cool video footage of the rifle bird. So all in all, the trip is definitely going quite well. I'm happy with the results that I've been getting thus far. I've actually not been able to edit any photos from the trip yet, but if you want to learn all about image editing and how to get the most out of your raw files, make sure to check out my Pro Sets and Masterclass down there in the description. With my Pro Sets, I enable you with just one click to transform your raw files to a great starting point. And then in my Masterclass, I teach you step by step everything you need to know about image editing to make your own images look amazing. So make sure to check it out down there in the description. In terms of equipment, I've mainly been using the Canon EF 600mm version 3 and my R5s. Now you might ask, why haven't you been using more of your R3, especially when you've been shooting in rainforest environments? And the answer to that you will actually be seeing in my next YouTube video that will be coming out this week, where I compare the R3 to the R5 with many photo examples and showing you exactly why in certain situations I might prefer the R5 over the R3. Another lens that I've used a lot is my RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens, and I just love that lens it's so small so versatile and for instance all the videos that i've taken this morning were handheld with that lens of the rifle bird and that really cute mcclay's honey eater in other news this week there has been a bit of a disappointment for me because we've been reading from a couple sources now that the r1 the higher megapixel canon flagship camera will likely not come out until 2023 or even 2024 for me personally, that's very disappointing because I really want to see a high megapixel, fast, flagship Canon camera similar to the Nikon Z9 and the Sony A1. I really feel like Canon is lacking a lot in that field. So when we will see that camera, we don't know yet. Fingers crossed that it will be sooner than 2023 or even 2024. I've also not gotten my R7 yet because I've been traveling it was actually hard to have it shipped to me but hopefully by the end of this week I will have my R7 as well and can share my own impressions firsthand with you and share some images and videos from the field with you with that camera. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for that review and I'm trying to make one very quickly. 
How are you going with your R7 if you have already gotten one? Are you liking it? Are you liking the layout? What do you think about the files? Are you actually having trouble working on the files in Adobe and other applications because it's not supported yet? Let me know down there in the comments. By now we've also seen a few videos and reviews or shall I say previews of the Nikon f4.5 400 millimeter lens and the lens looks great it's actually small lightweight and it's rumored to cost only around 2000 US dollars so all in all a fantastic package but my main question remains who's the main target for that lens because it would have to significantly outperform a 100 to 400 millimeter lens because Nikon has an excellent lens there and you just have more flexibility with that zoom so i'm curious to see who's going to buy that 400 millimeter lens and how it's actually going to perform in the field what do you think about that lens is it something that interests you let me know there's also rumor that we might see an update to the firmware of the nikon z9 and i think that would be something that would be great especially if nikon can add some improvements to the autofocus and the autofocusing system, especially when it comes to birds and flight tracking, the Z9 still seems to struggle a little bit at times. Overall, it's great, but there can always be improvements, can't there? It looks like Canon will also be announcing three new RF lenses very soon, an f1.8 135mm L lens, a 24 f1.8 STM lens and a 15 to 30 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 STM lens. So one L lens and two lower kind of spec lenses. All in all, I think three lenses a lot of people like to see, but personally not super interesting for me. I'm actually surprised that 24 millimeter isn't an L lens because I know a lot of people would have wanted an RF wide open 24 millimeter prime lens, but hopefully that's still going to come down the road. I hope you guys enjoyed this rapid fire early bird photo news from Townsville and I also hope those lorikeets in the background weren't too annoying. They can be very, very noisy, especially if you stand under those trees. It's crazy loud. So please make sure, like always, to give me a thumbs up for this video, leave me a comment with your thoughts and subscribe to the channel somewhere down there and I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.